What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and to episode one of Let's Play Hardcore RuneScape 3. I am so very excited for this series, especially for it to be running on my channel alongside my 2001 Scape and RSC Preservation series, um, because it's going to be a fun kind of look at the differences, how far RuneScape has come from that time to now. Now, I'm, I'm laughing right off the bat because for some reason, um, on my <laughs> PC's interface, um, Despite restarting the game and giving it a, a, a second try to, to change this up, the, the design your hero is like way at the top, touching the, the top of the interface. I'm not exactly sure um, why that is, but whatever the case, we are here um, and we're going to create a RuneScape 3 character. Um, I'm also excited uh, for this series because my main in RuneScape um, is Twinrova. And that is my most, I guess, advanced RuneScape account. It's my oldest RuneScape account. Um, nearing, uh, it's nearing the ability to earn a, a 20 year cape, which is pretty sick. But I've, I've missed a lot of the quests along the way. Um, I've done, I don't know, probably like a third to half of all the quests. Um, and so I want to go back and, and quest, but I'd, I'd like to replay some of the old quests in RuneScape 3. And so that is part of the function that this character and my other silent RS3 character, um, that, that is part of the function that these accounts will serve. So Tielenor is my silent account. You can see there's a series on my channel where when I want to play RuneScape, but I don't want to talk or record like with my voice, um, get all set up, or if I just want to play like on mobile or something, um, something chill, then I'll play on Tielenor. This is Tamrelenor, <laughs> which cracks me up. Um, the combination of Tamriel and Gielenor, so it's perfect for me. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started with character design. So, um, yeah, I'm going to need a lighter shade to represent myself. If I go to head, yeah, we're going to do hair color black. I like, let's see, there's one particular one that I think is, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. There's also another one with, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. I really like the thief. Right? This one? Yeah. They're like the Thief. Does it give you the name? Yeah, Thief's Overkilt. Rumpled Britches, Cut Off Pantaloons. <laughs> we did Mage Robes. Chef's Bloomers. Laborer's Apron. Yeah, I like the, the Thief's Overkit in straight black is my personal preference. Actually, my main character... Oh, interesting. I can't do straight black, but I can do close. Yeah, that, that looks fitting. My, my uh, RuneScape main looks like this. So if you ever see uh, videos about Twinrova on my channel, this is the look. So, And then I did this for Tamriel, uh, Tielenor. I wonder if I should do something different. Just a... You know, maybe I should do something to make them not look like identical. Yeah, why not? You can give it a, a little bit of a fashionable flair there. Yeah, no, we won't go this far. No, we won't go this far. That's cool, but we'll we'll leave it leave it like this. Okay, maybe not the boots actually. The boots maybe can stay gray. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay, sweet. So um, this will be our character now. There is one more important caveat. We're going to be playing this game in hardcore Iron Man mode. Um, now, what is that? So, uh, let's go over the difficulties. Standard play RuneScape is originally designed. No rule modifiers, trade items on the Grand Exchange, gain XP and rewards from events. So, that's normal. Iron Man mode. Be self-sufficient, making and using your own resources. Show your Iron Man badge. Impress others with your achievements. No, here, here's the, uh, the core of it. No player-to-player -player trades. And this is big in an MMO, right? Because usually... In an MMO, you can specialize. That's part of the fun of this kind of game. You can specialize. You know, maybe I want to be just... I just want to do mining and smithing. And I don't want to do all that pesky combat. And so I just get my mining and smithing levels to 99. And I sell the best gear in the game. And if I want anything that's dropped by a boss monster, I can trade away my smithed goods to a player that kills bosses. And, you know... You can kind of trade and barter, but in a, with an Iron Man account, if you want something, you have to get it. If you want an armor in the game that can only be smithed by a master, uh, someone with 99 smithing, 
then you have to be the one to get 99. If you want to drop from a boss monster, you have to kill it until it drops it. And that is a part of the, the fun of an Iron Man account. Limited access to event rewards, and this makes sense so that you don't... Um, I mean, uh, like, Iron Man characters, are they're supposed to... They're supposed to have a challenge, right? So they don't... RuneScape 3 gives you a lot of uh, handouts um, from events. And so this is going to make the game just more challenging. Multiplayer gameplay with Iron Man only minigame and bosses. Oh, yeah. So you can only do those things with Iron Man characters. They have special rules about who gets the drop. Um, there's different mechanics for splitting wealth or loot between Iron Man versus normal characters. Okay, so then if you take this one step for further, you have Hardcore Iron Man. Play RuneScape with the Iron Man rule set, but with permadeath. Show your Hardcore Iron Man badge and press others with your achievements. Includes all Iron Man rule modifiers. Death removes your Hardcore status, continuing as a regular Iron Man. Yeah, so that's what we're going to play. We're going to see how far we can go in one life, and even if we can't survive, um... As a hardcore Iron Man forever, uh, at least we'll still be playing the game in Iron Man mode. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a blast. All right, what is your experience with the RuneScape? Okay, so if you uh, if you check out my Silent RS3 series, I said that I've played very recently. It dropped me off in Berthorp, um, and I started following like this progression of tasks that it gives you off the bat in the game. Um, which is fine, but I'm actually I actually would rather kind of pick my own um, goals and objectives off the bat. So I'm probably not going to do the Birthorp task set, but I also don't want it to just drop me off. I, I actually want to play through whatever the introductory material is. So I'm, I'm actually going to pick I've never played before, which is not true. Um, but I just want to see what RuneScape does for a brand new player. So yeah, hope you enjoy this together with me. What? No way. I'm on Tutorial Island? Guys, I had no idea. I thought there was a quest, like a Davenport or something quest. Oh my gosh. I am so stoked to see an RS3 Tutorial Island. Are you kidding me? I thought this was gone. Wow. Okay, we have to take this all in. Um, notice that uh, on one of my other recent videos, I noticed that this was a portrait of the king. Now it is a watermill. So obviously there's been a, a change in in taste here, right? Like maybe the king is going out of, out of style. This is sick, and this I think was a good idea. Okay, so Detroit Island, um, right-click Reginald to talk to him. Left-click on the floor to move. Left-click target for default action. Yeah, okay. Um... Sick. Wow, I did not think that we would be here. Look at the table. Look how epic it looks. Look at all the fun food. Let's see if I can rotate and get you a view this way. Wow, like this room is in the tutorial island on 2004 Scape and in Classic, but it's empty. Is there a chest that I can open that has nothing? Wow, they won't even let you open it. It's locked. Crazy. Okay, so let's talk to Reginald. Ah, a new arrival to the world of Gelinor. Welcome, adventurer. When you're ready to continue your journey, open that door over there. Okay, so that's it. They don't, uh, it doesn't have any kind of intro thing. Okay, so I really like to play RuneScape 3 with a legacy interface, but I don't think I can do that on Tutorial Island. Because if I remember right, it's going to one at a time give me stuff to do. Yeah, skip tutorial. I actually want to play this for fun. So we'll we'll switch to the legacy interface um, as soon as we can. Now go outside and talk to your first instructor, Brenna, the survival expert. Wow, this is so cool. This is epic. This is a way better way to start. Hello there, newcomer. My name is Brenna. I'm going to teach you about s skills you'll need to survive. Skill interface. Let's go. There's a new one, necromancy. You have many skills you can train. The more you practice, the better you get. I'll tell you about the woodcutting, fishing, fire making, and cooking skills. Let's start with woodcutting. Chop a tree until you get some logs in your backpack. 
That might this might take a few swings. You get some logs. That was actually really fast. Excellent. Very good. Now let's put those logs to use. Light the logs in your backpack to make a fire. Okay, so here is already an in difference between RS3 and um, you know 2001 Scape or RC Preservation or 2004 Scape. Any of my other series is going on. My I, my hatchet is in my tool belt. I don't know if it'll show my wealth, my coins, backpack. Let's see. No, I'm already on my backpack. At some point, I'll show you the tool belt. But I have a hatchet on my person that I was able to cut that tree down with. And now I can just right-click light, and there's a tinder box on my tool belt. Woo! You made a fire and earned experience in the fire making skill. Excellent. Well done. You can cook food on a fire. If you're ever injured, eating food will restore your health. We'll need something to cook. There are shrimp in the pond, so let's catch and cook some. Wherever you see bubbles in the water, there's probably some good fishing to be had there. Excellent. This should only take a few seconds to catch fish. You catch some raw shrimp. You use the raw shrimp on the fire. You accidentally burn the shrimp. <laughs> LOL. Wouldn't be a RuneScape without failing. There's no success without failure here in RuneScape. You successfully cooked the shrimp. Wow, that looks delicious. Oh, well done. Now you have some food to eat whenever you feel poorly. I've taught you all I can about woodcutting, fire making, and fishing. Open the gate, follow the path to the next area, and talk to the master chef. He'll teach you more about cooking. All right, well, um, I might as well, while I'm here, can I, like, skill up and get some logs? Is this going to... Oh, that might be a pain, actually. Is it going to change my interface to my bag every time I cut a tree here? Boom, level two. Used to, I would get to level three in all of my skills on Tutorial Island. Um, this might actually make that a little challenging, but maybe not. I don't have to be staring at my skill interface. I love how it's just immediately giving me a log. Perfect, okay, so level three. Now I don't think I can level again. Let's, uh, why don't we test it? You've chopped enough logs for now? Oh, okay, so it won't let me get like one XP past level three. Okay, so at level two, we unlock wood knots from normal trees. What does a wood knot do? I can't remember. I can't remember what I do with a wooden knot. Skill level 40, nice, heading towards a initial milestone of 50. Sweet. Um, yeah, let's light logs. And then let's use the logs on the fire. You can't cook this on this fire. Okay, I was going to try to make a bonfire. Okay, so I'm going to have to... Yeah. Oh, we leveled up. Sweet. So they're going to make this challenging, but I am going to do the best I can. Woo, level three. Let's go. Now, was that the three skills? No, the other one was fishing. Let's, uh... Do some fishing. Well, let me keep fishing. If I just click repeatedly, oh my gosh, this is so fast. This is like broken. <laughs> Boom, level two fishing. Nice. Yep. Keep going. we the fastest three levels ever. Caught enough fish for now. Excellent. Okay, so then we want to cook, actually. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, there's level two. This should go really fast. So they made it painful. 
like so that you, so that you won't just sit here and get level three. Maybe that's not why. They're probably just trying to make it easy for new people to learn how to play the game. But. There's no stopping me. Excellent. Okay. Level three. Yay. Level three fishing. You've unlocked the Davio. From Davendale. Davendale. That is that is where um, I thought this tutorial was going to take place. Cooking. Heim crab potato in Damonheim. The Dungeoneering location. And then nothing yet. Lots of stuff at level one. We'll get a lantern at level four. Terramin incense sticks. Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and move forward. The mini map shows the area you're currently in. Left click a location on the mini map to travel to that location. Yep. We are unlocking the interface one step at a time through this tutorial, which is way better than just following all of the tasks in Berthor, in my humble opinion. Wow. This is so cool. We don't have, like, the world map button. Can we see the mainland from here? It's, like, off the coast somewhere, right? I haven't really thought about that, but the draw distance is so much longer now in RS3. It might explicitly be hiding the mainland. Maybe you can see it on the end where you are actually going to leave the island. I'm not sure. This looks awesome, though. All right. Welcome, newcomer. I'm the master chef, Lev. I will teach you how to cook food truly fit for a king. I already know how to cook. Brenna just taught me. Ha! You call that cooking? You're much more likely to burn your food if you cook on a log fire out in the open. You should cook at a range whenever you can. Ooh, interesting. Now I'm going to teach you the fine art of baking bread. So I guess range is... I knew the, sh the cook's assistant range, right, that the chef gives you um, is a higher... It's a better chance cooking lower chance of burning right i didn't realize that ranges in general are just better odds than fires that's interesting now i'm going to teach you the fine art of baking bread the master chef gives you an empty bucket and a pot of flour fill the bucket with water from the sink then use it to wet the flour into dough then bake the dough into bread on my range i think i can handle that okay yeah so i'm gonna move i'm gonna rearrange some stuff here Why? I don't know. For fun, I guess. Okay. I like things to be as nice and neat as they possibly can. Not always possible. Okay. Get water from sink. Yep. Use the bucket on the pot of flour. You mix the water and flour to make some bread dough. And let's use the dough on the range. All right, it'd be bread. And it didn't even burn at once and make me do it again, like in a uh, classic and probably RS2. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of freshly baked bread. Be sure to carry a little food with you on your adventures. If you're injured in combat, eating is the best way to feel better. And that has always been a funny part of RuneScape to me. Just, you know, mid combat, do a backwards roll shove some fried shrimp into your mouth and then roll right back into combat. There are all sorts of food you can cook with the right ingredients and a high enough cooking skill. Pies, cakes, stews, you can even churn cream and butter or brew your own mead. Excellent. That is all fun stuff. Okay. Well, he's not going to say to move forward. You'll be a master chef before you know it. Now off to the next area with you. See, they should have said that last. But instead it just kind of like stopped and made you check your activity tracker okay um nice yeah this is cool we're already about halfway done follow the path to the home of the quest guide keep looking off the edge of the world i see nothing no other land i cannot tell you how surprised i am that this episode is on tutorial island i had no idea that runescape 3 brought back tutorial island is so cool. I think this is a good play on their part. Because of just the nostalgia happiness here. Wardrobe, a bow cabinet, weapon rack. There's a staircase up. 
Ah, welcome adventurer. I'm here to tell you about quests. Let's start by opening the quest list. A quest name is red if you've not started it. When you've started a quest, it'll change color to yellow to show it's in progress, and to green when you've completed the quest. To find the start of a quest, look for the quest icon in your mini-map. You usually start the quest by talking to someone nearby. Quests can vary greatly from collecting beads to hunting down dragons. You have to experience the thrill of questing yourself to fully understand. You may find some adventure in the cave under my house. I forgot about this. Oh my gosh, we're going to go learn mining down there. Oh, I forgot. RuneScape Classic doesn't do this. And those, the last tutorial islands that I've played on were all classic. So, wow. That is cool. Okay, with the quests, um, I just want to point out there's different ways you can sort them. Timeline is cool. Pathfinder is like a good set of beginner quests to go through. Looks like this might be filtered on, yeah, quests. Full length quests. Yeah, it's not showing locked quests. That's, yeah, what I wanted to point out. So there's a lot of quests in this game, which is excellent. Yeah, so if you play through the game in this order, I think this is probably the developer's intended order for you to play the quests in. Pathfinder, Adventurer, Heroic, Legendary, Mythic, the World Guardian story after you finish all of the old quests, and then now the Age of Chaos story. Um, but I... As in my other RuneScape series, ser series is series, right? <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm going to be playing through the quests in their release date order. It's 2001, 2, 3, all the way through to the modern time. That is my plan. So we have a lot of questing to get through. And this is really my main goal with this account is to play through all of the quests in RuneScape 3 without using guides. Now, I know that's going to be challenging. I understand that, like, Elemental Workshop is insane, but we're going to do it. Um, yeah, it just takes time, effort, <laughs> brain power, thinking. We don't need a quest guide to get through the quests. We don't need Wikipedia. Um, yeah, so that that is going to be the plan. You're going to see me playing through RuneScape content without looking things up, and so this may become inefficient, but what it's going to force me to do, as it has on my other series, is to become self-sufficient and remember where things are and actually learn about the world, um, which is fun. Yeah, so I just wanted to digress briefly, or tangent briefly, to talk about the goals of the series. It looks like there's some... Yeah, this is cool. You can sort it in some really fun ways. Fifth versus Sixth Age. That's really handy. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, and so with this, um, we're going to get a sense of the history of RuneScape as we play. So that is exciting. Okay, let's uh, let's carry on with the tutorial. Awesome, we are in the mines. Oh my gosh. I remember this so much. Wow. Greetings, my name is Desic, and I'm a miner by trade. On either side of me are rocks containing tin and copper ore. Mine two tin ore and two copper ore. We're going to smell it and smith a melee weapon for you. Let's do it. So mining is different in RS3. They've had a mining rework. So when you swing your pick at the rock, you do damage to it. And when this bar fills up, you acquire an ore. Um, and it actually works out pretty well, I think. Because it slows down progress and makes each individual piece of equipment that you create more valuable. So you have less throwaways. You still have throwaways, but less of it. Um, now also, some items are upgradable. So instead of making like 10 steel swords, maybe you make one and then upgrade it, you know, two or three times. And then you end up only making like two or three of them. So yeah, overall, I think it is a beneficial change now we're probably not gonna have enough room in our bag for all of the ore it's gonna take to get to level three i didn't 
quite think this through, but uh, we'll try. We'll see how it goes. We'll hit a bank at some point. I think there's a bank tutorial. You notice that? You might have noticed that there was like a yellow rock. Every so often it gives you a... If you change rocks, it'll give you a higher damage swing against the against the ore. Okay. You show the mining instructor the tin and ore, copper ore you mined. Great work. The better the pickaxe you use, the faster you'll mine. Also, the better the pickaxe, the higher the mining level you'll require to wield it. So why do I want to mine ore? You can use your smithing skill to smelt ore into metal bars at a furnace. Then at an anvil, you smith the bars into melee weapons and armor worn by warriors. You can smelt tin and copper together to make bronze equipment. Simply deposit the ores into a furnace, forge your anvil, then use the furnace to smelt them into a bar of metal. Sweet. Let's smelt. Okay. At a furnace, you can store your mined ore in your metal bank and smelt ores into bars. Yep, okay, so... <laughs> Although I know how to do all of this stuff, um, RS3 insists on, I guess I could turn the tutorial off, on teaching you how to do everything, so. Uh, I'm gonna dump my ore into the bank, select bronze bars, and then begin the smelting project to smelt two bars of bronze. It just takes a moment to learn these interfaces. They're not so bad. They look worse than they are. You should deposit your bars into yeah, I'm gonna I don't want it to mess up the quest in case the quest is checking my bag. So how do I make a weapon out of bronze out of a bronze bar? When you use an anvil, you'll choose the item you want to smith, as long as you have a high enough smithing level and the correct number of bars. The higher your smithing level, the better quality of metal you can work. Start off on bronze and work your way up as your smithing skill increases. Start by smithing a bronze dagger at an anvil. Alright, so we're gonna Okay, yeah. Deposit any ores or bars. We're gonna select bronze. We wanna work with bronze equipment. We're gonna pick a bronze dagger and begin the project. So we're gonna heat the project up in the forge. And then we're going to start hammering. And instead of immediately getting the item. I don't know that you immediately got the item before. I can't remember. Um, but there's another bar that fills up. And then the heat of the item decreases over time. If you have longer smithed items, you might have to reheat it at the forge. You finish smithing a bronze dagger. You smith the bronze bars into a bronze dagger. How redundant. All right, back to the mining instructor. Excellent, now that you have a melee weapon, you're ready to learn about combat. Sweet, let's equip it. Actually, yeah, let's equip it. Wow, I've got a dagger on my hilt, y'all. How epic. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Let's, um, yeah, let's see if we can't hit level 3 mining in smithing while we're here. Just for fun to max out the skills we can earn on Tutorial Island. Mostly just for fun, because I, I literally had no idea t today that we were going to get the pleasure of running through Tutorial Island <laughs> on RS3. so sick now what's fun is that a lot of the people that watch my channel are probably not very familiar with runescape 3 actually a lot of the people that watch my channel are probably much more f uh, familiar with um, runescape classic or old school runescape and so hopefully by watching this you can see that runescape 3 is also a fun time it's very different but uh, at, its, at its core it's RuneScape. Yeah, mining too. And especially if you play with an Iron Man account, um, then RuneScape 3 really is a fun, challenging, enjoyable experience. Compelling, even. Level 2 mining. Awesome. Oh. Need to finish that. Yeah, let's get it. Boom. All right, so three and three. Let's check what we get with level two mining. Copper and tin critical swing chance increase. So we now have an extra 5% chance for a critical hit. We're mining copper and tin. Nice, that'll be helpful. Um, no, first we want to smelt. Yep, three. Bronze bars. Yep. 
Yep, let's deposit them all. And then what would be useful? Yeah, let's do a full helm. And start a set of bronze gear as we work towards three mining and three smithing. Nice, you finished smithing, bronze full helm. Let's equip it. Yeah! Check it out, bronze dagger, bronze helm. Actually, do we have, we don't have, oh, we're gonna get that interface soon, um, where we can look at our equipment stats. I was, gonna, I was thinking that would be fun. Okay, um, let's go ahead and mine some more. Let's see if we can get closer to three mining. Okay, now we really need to think about... Okay, it doesn't really matter, but might end up with more, like, copper than tin. Yeah, let's go over to tin. Over here? Yeah. Mining is my favorite skill. Um, if you're wondering why I'm, you know, happy... Just giddy to take this extra time. It's because I love mining. Absolute favorite skill. Yeah, we might not end up with three smithing. Just because of the imbalance and XP gain between mining and smithing. Sweet. Okay, yeah, we're gonna hit three smithing maybe and one more rock, but hopefully in two, in case it prevents us from getting copper. Okay, it's not gonna prevent us. It's just not giving us any XP. Okay. So let's smelt. Into bronze bars. This is so fun. I'm just, you know, maximizing my time on Destroy Island because who knows when I'll be back on RS3. Okay, yep, we're going to deposit all. Right click, deposit all. And then, um, 5% better critical swings. Nice. So we have a better critical swing chance from the last level, and then when they hit, they're more effective. Let's, uh, let's make a plate body. Yep. And notice that from level 1 smithing, you can make any bronze item. I think this is an interesting change as well. Yeah. Level 2 smithing, let's go. Smelt bronze bar is 25% faster. Nice. Oh, notice that sound? That's telling me that my heat has lowered to a point where I'm going to start making slower progress on the project. But I think it's cool and useful that you can make anything. Basically, you have to get a certain level to achieve the ability to smith with that material. Like there's a certain level for smithing steel, for instance. Then you can make whatever you want, which is super handy so you don't make a bunch of unnecessary items that you don't really want or need. Yeah! Sick. Okay, now of course we need play legs. Play legs. I don't have three bronze bars? How many do I have? None? What? And I would waste the XP if I were to mine it? No. Okay, well, I guess we could just get to look funky, all half-armored for a minute. That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on. And we only hit two smithing, but that's okay. I don't want to, like, waste the... Only 30 XP away. Wow. We were so close. I actually might have something. Let's see. Oh, I can't unequip it. I don't have the interface yet. But if I go to settings. Oh, I can't customize yet. Nope. There's all kinds of stuff I don't have yet. No worries, no worries. We'll just press on. Hey, it's this guy. Level 146. Oh my gosh, the combat level went up. Max combat went up because of necromancy. 
Oh my gosh. You can get up to level 1, combat level 146 now? That is insane. And this guy is already <laughs> max necromancy, apparently. Hi, my name's Tim Relinor. To me, you're just another newcomer who thinks they're ready to fight. I'm Vinaka, the greatest swordsman alive. Now you're ready for combat. Attack around. Oh, he was probably going to have me equip. Dang, I didn't get the butter knife message. Usually he says something like, Oh, no, 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 I will get the butter knife method message. He says to equip the dagger and go fight a rat, and he's like, well, let's get you something better than that butter knife or something. I don't know. That's my prediction. We'll see how it actually turns out. Attack a rat. You'll continue to fight each other until it's dead or you do something else. Notice he doesn't mention that I can die, although I could. Okay. Now, I don't have, uh, like, the typical combat interface. It wants me to kill this rat, not any old ra level 3 giant rat. There's just a pit of massive rats down here with the door open. It's wild. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. It's not showing me any of the combat interface. Like, it's not teaching me how to combat. Yeah, these are abilities that are firing, like a revolution of abilities. No drops. Well done, you've defeated your first monster. There's a lot more to combat, including the ranged and magic skills. You learn about them when you get to the mainland. For now, you're finished in this cave. Return to the service and continue on your journey. Wow, so it just like, they have not updated Tutorial Island to teach you anything about how modern combat works in RuneScape. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'll just move on. There's an opportunity for improvement there. Because a newcomer would think, oh, I'm just going to click on things to fight. Which you can do that, but, you know, RuneScape 3 has a totally different enhanced combat system that you can play with. Aha! Financial advisor. Money is useful because you can buy items from shops if you don't want to craft them yourself. Gold coins are the currency of the human kingdoms. Your coins are kept in your coin pouch below the items in your backpack. You currently have zero coins. There are three basic ways to make money. Skilling, combat, and trading. Wow, we can't do that last part. Oh, we can trade with, like, the general store. Some people have work for an adventurer like you and will reward you for completing quests. You can only carry so many items in your backpack. You can deposit items you want to keep and not sell into your bank. You can access your bank from a bank booth or bank chest. Look for the bank icon on your mini-map or world map. Sick. Okay, let's go ahead and deposit extra food. Don't need all of this. Let's, why not, have like a logs in the general area. We can do the bucket and pot and then... I don't know, we'll, we'll drop the burnt shrimp. There's nothing, no reason. You're nearly finished. The prayer instructor would like to have a chat with you in the nearby church. I'm just gonna sling my burnt shrimp on the floor here in this nice bank. Look at the vault door. What is it even hiding? Is there even anything back here? Ooh, there's a ladder. It's impossible to climb. Broken ladder. That is interesting. They're like, just in case you can glitch through this door, we're going to make this ladder inaccessible. Interesting. That's cool, though. Okay. Bank table. A table used by bank customers. Interesting. All right, we'll move on. This has been so fun. Honestly, this has been a blast. Let's head over to the church. Oh, let's look off. Can we see any distant islands? No. Okay, let's go to church. Prayer instructor. Good day, brother. My name's Tamara Lenore. Hello, Tamara Eleanor. I'm Brother Brace. I'm here to tell you all about prayer. This is your prayer list. Prayers boost your effectiveness in combat. As you increase your level in the prayer skill, you'll unlock more prayers. Click the prayer you wish to use to activate it. Click it again to deactivate it. Active prayers will drain your prayer points. You recharge your prayer points by praying at an altar usually found in a church. Most enemies will drop bones when defeated. Pick up and bury bones to earn prayer experience. Are there rules for how I should behave? Wow. 
love how it forces me to ask that question. Yes, in general, always try to be courteous to others. Remember that adventurers like yourself are real people with real feelings. If you go around being abusive or causing trouble, you could end up in trouble. Keep that in mind. That uh, text, maybe not the exact text, but that kind of um, sentiment is also in the Tutorial Island on RuneScape Classic. Just interesting. Only it's not the... You're not in a church when they tell you. What is on my chest? Is that like a plate of metal? I mean, that makes sense because it's plate mail, but like... It just looks... I don't know. Yeah, there's like a harness on my back and like this little patch of extra material on my chest. That is kind of funny. But yeah, prayer works very similar in RS3 to how it works in older versions of RuneScape. You just toggle a buff on and off. There are other ways to train than burying bones, though. Which is cool. Alright, we're almost done with the tutorial. Sick. Still no mainland in sight. Oh, are we going to uh, wind strike a chicken, or is he just going to send me on my way? Good day, newcomer. Your journey is nearly at its end. My name is Terova. Whoa. Terova. I wonder if this name inspired me to pick Twin Rova? I know the Rova twins are in Legend of Zelda, and that's kind of how I came up with Twin Rova. But I didn't really think about this guy's name being Taro, but that's kind of close. Man, there had to be some kind of inspiration. Before you leave for the mainland, I'm going to tell you a little bit about magic. Let's start by opening your spell book. This is a list of your spells. Casting spells increases your magic skill and consumes runes, which you carry in your backpack. You create your runes with the rune crafting skill. With a low magic level, you can only cast the simplest spells, such as airstrike. You must wield a magic weapon to cast, com cast combat spells. You'll begin your adventure in Berthorp, in the kingdom of Asgarnia. The Berthorp Imperial Guard need an adventurer like yourself to defend their principality from trolls invading from the north. I'm going to deactivate the protective spells around this island so you can home teleport to Berthorp using the Lodestone Network. If you ever get lost, you can freely teleport to a Lodestone you've discovered. Home teleport. This map shows which Lodestones you have activated so far. Berthorpe Lodestone has been activated for you. Click the Lodestone to teleport there. Wow, so that's it? I'm not going to airstrike a chicken? Epic. Well, this has been cool playing on Tutorial Island. I'll miss you guys. All right, let's head to Berthorpe. Wow, and Terova. A master of magic. So Tutorial Island was cool, it was nostalgic. However, if I was a new player, I mean, maybe they don't need to cover that much, I don't know, but the basics of combat would have been useful, like the Davin, oh. Oh, I remember this, my silent character saw this. Birth Orb. Looks epic, it looks way better on PC than mobile. So I've been playing my, uh, I've been playing on mobile with my silent character. And it's been so laggy, um, but fun. Okay, T to Turiel. Talk to Turiel, northwest of the Birth of Lodestone. Your activity tracker lists suggested objectives and activities. Your first objective is to speak to Turiel, the Slayer Master. Okay, so I, okay, wow, there's a lot. First thing first, settings. Let's go to, we're in full screen mode. I wanna go to, is it interfaces or additional? Yeah, legacy modes. Not legacy combat, but legacy interface mode you can't swap while on the birth orb introduction path okay so i guess i'm gonna to need to turn that off so if you want to see the birth orb introduction path you can head over to my silent series and follow along as t eleanor um makes his way through the birth orb introductory path and it's cool you get some cool um stuff out of it and it kind of helps you on your way but I would rather kind of start fresh if that makes sense yeah so I'm going to go to settings and let's see if I can't turn off actually is there like a let's go here 
activity tracker. Okay, no path selected. So I turned off that path. Now, is that all I needed to do? Or is there something else I need to do to get out of... Boom. Okay, it worked. Excellent. Nice. Okay, so yeah. This is cool. So you can play RuneScape um, with a legacy interface. And I love it. I've been playing this way for years. And your abilities bar shows up right here. Awesome. Okay. So now I know that I leveled up a little bit, but do I want to keep the stuff that I got from Tutorial Island? Mm, yeah, why not? It's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, that's like almost nothing. Okay. Sweet. Path complete banking. <sighs> oh my gosh. See, there's like just all kinds of little things you can do here in Berthorp, and it'll... Basically, you do stuff and get rewards for it. Do I want to do it? Do I want to follow the path? It's going to rip me out of... Um, is it going to let me? Oh my gosh. It's going to let me do it in legacy interface mode? Okay. Well, let's just see what happens. To continue this path, your combat interface setup must be changed from what you're using now. Dang, do we want to do this or no? Guys, what do you think? Do I just go off on my own or do I follow the path? Hmm. Okay, I'll do it. Why not? Hello, and what are you after then? Adventure, something to kill, or fortune and glory. Adventure, well, you've come to the right place. I'm a Slayer Master. I train adventurers to seek out and defeat specific monsters. I'll identify suitable targets and assign you a quota. Berthorp is surrounded by dangerous creatures. Are you eager to battle monsters for fun, heroism, and profit? Then Slayer is the skill for you. Trolls are the real enemy in Berthorp, but you'll need food and armor to survive against them. You should prepare, prepare before risking your life in combat. This is the last adventurer they sent me. He fought the trolls without armor or food. Don't be him. Wow, they just got this dude <laughs> dead next to a tree. Didn't bring armor, didn't bring food. Don't be this guy. <laughs> that is actually terrible. Call to adventure. Discover why the Berthorp and Pillar Guards need your help. We've earned five coins. Wow, we're up to a whopping 15 coins, guys. The nearest fishing spot is the lake to the south of us. Go catch and cook yourself plenty of crayfish. We eat to live while fighting trolls. To cook raw food when there isn't a range nearby, you can make a fire by burning logs. So first chop logs from a tree near the crayfish. Then you'll need some melee armor, a helmet at the very least. Once you have food, get ore from the mine southwest of here to smith yourself a bronze helm. Okay. Can I move this? Yeah. So let's go ahead. If you don't play with the legacy interface mode... Um, you can actually like move and rearrange just about everything in the game. So let's do this. Yeah. And then I kind of would like for this to be in the same. Yeah, there we go. Um, this I can actually close. I bet I can make this smaller. Yeah. That's not really smaller, but maybe like this. Yeah, that is a cool feature of like RuneScape 3 being able to adjust the interface. Okay. Yeah, let's uh let's get some lore details. Tell me about Berthorp. Berthorp is surrounded by dangerous creatures. Trolls to the north. So that way. Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Let me move the chat up here. There we go. I'm doing great. Um, thanks for thanks for joining the stream and for hanging out. I guess I could turn on the view count since we actually have a couple people here. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here, hanging out in the stream. Appreciate it. Trolls to the north, wolves to the west. Oh yeah, the White Wolf Mountains. Yeah, look how sick that looks. Oh my gosh, it's like looming. 
in the distance. Goblins in the east. Really? Oh, I guess there is the little goblin. I, I forget. Oh my gosh, Warchief. <laughs> I don't know that I can do that. Um, yet. It's going great. I am actually just... I made it through Tutorial Island. I was really surprised that RuneScape 3 still has... Well, I brought Tutorial Island back, which is really cool. And now, um, after some deliberating, I decided to actually follow the, like, Birthwarp introductory path. Um, just because there's some, like, cool little lore tidbits as you play it. So, yeah, it's going well. And don't even get me started on the Guthix Damned Rabbits. We're in the eye of the storm, and it's the duty of the Order of the Slayer Masters to keep that bloodshot eye wide open. Wow. Yeah, I noticed that there are rabbits over here. Um, I guess they must be a nuisance to the locals. Tell me about the trolls. Mountain trolls are hard as rocks and half as smart. They're always hungry, but trolls don't seem to understand we don't like being eaten. Trolls even name themselves after the first thing they eat, or the noise we make when they eat us. That's crazy. Trolls will eat literally anything, but people taste much better than rocks, and the mountains are mostly rocks. So when the trolls raid Berthorpe, the Imperial Guard make sure it's the trolls' last meal or die trying. Why didn't the trolls eat the last action hero over there? Did he taste as bad as he smells? Oh, plot hole. Tamrelinor is already calling out <laughs> the plot holes. Ah yes, the chosen one, of many. I pulled him out of the cave as an example for the next adventurer that came along. How's that working out for you? It is. I agree. It is very fun and nostalgic. Especially Tutorial Island. Um, although I think that there's a lot of room for improvement um, for them to kind of like help a new player out with the Tutorial Island experience. It's, I, I like that they have it. Um, and it's kind of, it kind of makes sense. They, they run you through Tutorial Island and then when they dump you out on the mainland, they start you down this path that teaches you how to do everything. So that's pretty cool. I'm not dead yet. Keep it up. You may even make habit of it. Okay. Um, guidance bank. Yeah, I don't need any of that. All right. Sweet. Wants me to chop down a tree to get some logs. So what I was going to do if I didn't go down the path, um, the birthwork path, is I was going to get level 10 in different skills. Like work towards a 10 cape, essentially. I want a quest... I want to work on skills. I like every. I like doing everything in RuneScape. Um, it's all fun. So, I guess what I can do is con continue to go down the path, but like just keep leveling past when it asks me to move on. Whoa! Check that person out with the red cape. I think I get that from the cave, right? From fighting trolls. Don't worry. We're gonna improve our fashion scape. Um, we won't look like this for long. Oh, now that I'm out, I actually think. You might get some stuff. Let's see, customizations. Wow, that's a lot of uh, description. Hopefully you don't need me to explain things for you if you're watching this video. Um, yeah, feel free to comment questions below. I'm happy to answer any of your specific questions, but I probably won't go over every interface everywhere because RS3 has a ton of them. Um, I think if I filter this down to owned... Then there's like, okay, there's the hardcore outfit. I don't want to use that yet. But I thought maybe you get like a backpack? Yeah, skilling backpack. Yeah. Okay. Let's clear. Not hide, but clear all. And then skilling backpack. Yeah, that's cool. So then it's kind of like, um, this kind of makes you look like, uh, like Luke in Star Wars, right? You know? You, are you seeing seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> While you're training. It's kind of a, a cool... And this is just cosmetic. So basically, RuneScape has like a... Oh, let me get out of your way, sir. I don't want to... Nope. Oh, look how kind. Look how kind. He was also trying to avoid the, tree, the same tree for me. Wow. What a kind place. Okay, so we've got a bronze hatchet. Oh, I can show you the tool belt now. In case you haven't seen this before. Here's the tool belt, and yeah, it unlike 2001 Scape, or RSC, or really any older version of RuneScape, we've got a tool belt, and so we don't have to carry all these tools with us in our bag. They don't take up our bag slots, which is cool. 
Uh, you know, you're you're actually right. I don't think there's a flip emote. Let's see. Good point, War Chief. Um, man, I'm trying to remember where the emotes even are. Here it is. Yeah. How about uh? See, we can jump for joy. <laughs> <laughs> these are hilarious. I love that these are still in the game. Heavy metal. We celebrate. What? Wow, that's something to do at a 99 party. Right right there. That's epic. Yep, there's no flip, unfortunately. As soon as I can do a flip um, with the bag looking like Luke, I will I will do so, War Chief, and I will let you know so that you can watch it. <laughs> So yeah, we have a bronze hatchet. Um, yeah, the unfortunate thing about really low-level woodcutting is that each tree only gives up one log, right? And so that's obviously not optimal because you have to go running around um, from tree to tree. So it's good that Berthorpe has all these trees right next to each other. RS3, um, Oh, nice. You've earned your first level in a skill. That's not true, but okay. Higher skill levels unlock. Oh, what is that? What the epic? You hear that? My level 50 total milestone? Wow. All the serotonin from, from that. Epic. Okay, you've earned your first level in a skill. Higher skills levels unlock new activities. Equipment to craft, locations to explore, quests to complete, and much more. Sweet. With level 4 wood cutting, we get absolutely nothing. Wow. Wood box capacity increases by 10. Wood box? There's a wood box? What? Kind of like the ore box? They added a wood box? Oh, <gasps> you can make it. What? A wood box can be created. It can be upgraded via the fletching skill. Ooh. Wow. What do I need? Six logs to make a wood box? Oh, that is epic. I did not even know. Sounds fair enough to me. <laughs> I had no idea that there was even such a thing. So like an ore box, which is a box that you use so you don't have to make as many trips to the bank, right, um, when mining, it looks like I can make a box that will hold logs, is my assumption. Oh my gosh. Epic. A box for holding level one resources, basic logs. That is so cool and useful. Wow. I am actually really excited about that. That's gonna make wood cutting um, way easier. Woo, wood cutting level five, let's go. We got some things, yeah. Wood box capacity increased by 10. Nice, nice. So yeah, when you're doing low-level woodcutting, you have to run from tree to tree, which is unfortunate, but Berthorpe and Taverly are kind of like the new player area, like it used to be Lumbridge. And you can still go skill in Lumbridge, like they're, it's still a beginner area, but they've really kind of made Berthorpe and Taverly. You're going to freak out once you learn you can make it with each tree level up. Oh yeah, so like you can... Uh, Wow, War Chief, you've already done this and know this. That's cool. I so I, I played with the ore box, and I know that you know you make a bronze box, then an iron box, and steel, which is cool. You upgrade it all the way up, and at each level you can store higher level resources and then way more resources. So if it's like that, that is actually really cool. Like I'm going to be able to upgrade it to like an oak box. Yeah, capacity increase. We're going to hit level 10 in no time. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I forgot to mention. One of the perks of getting all of your skills to a certain denomination of 10, right? Like getting all of your skills to 10 or 20 or 30, right? Just like there are um, capes of accomplishment for 99s, right? You've got your skill capes for hitting 99 in a skill. There is a cape for having all skills at level 10. Let's go level 7 woodcutting. All skills at 10, 20, 30. Each, uh, each step along the way, getting all of your skills to a multiple of 10, 
there's a special cape that goes with it that you can create. So that's pretty cool. You can kind of wear that and show off how um, how advanced of a skiller your character is. Which is fun. Notice that there are Christmas ornaments all over these trees, and that is because it is almost Christmas time in real life when I'm recording this. So who knows when you're actually watching this, uh, when it eventually makes it on YouTube. This is kind of peaceful. We've just got the the rabbits that um, Tariel was freaking out about hanging out, and uh, some some trees gathered around this Stonehenge-like structure for the druids. Um, I believe they teach you the herb lore skill, right? There's like a quest over here that unlocks herb lore for you. I don't know if you actually have to complete that quest anymore. Level eight, two more to go. Two more to go. Yeah, I don't know if you actually have to complete that quest anymore um, to do herb lore. Well, I'm in before it makes it to YouTube at 6:45 a.m. with zero sleep. Where 6:45 a.m. Okay, let me try to think. What time is it here? In Arkansas, it is 1:45 p.m. So you must be halfway around the world. J.K. 1:45 to 12:45 would be Mountain. Um, 11.45 would be, oh, my inventory, I need to actually put stuff in my wood box. 11.45 would be like California, Pacific time. 10.45 would be Alaska, right? 9.45 a.m. would be, what, like, I like Pacific? It's probably 9.8. Probably 9-8-ish is like the ocean. And I'm just guessing. I don't actually know this stuff. So I'm going to guess 7-6 is like Eastern Asia. Like is this like Japan or China? Russia maybe? Philippines? Yeah. My, my guess is, is Eastern Asia. I think UK right now would be this time right here, War Chief. Um, 7-46 should be... UK time. All right, that's wood cutting up to 10. Or up to 9. I mean, only one level to go. You failed. <laughs> Straya is the correct answer. I have no idea. Straya? Australia? Is that what you mean by Straya? <laughs> does, does Straya mean Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Stry is the correct answer. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Oh, that kills me. That is awesome. Well, thanks for joining the stream from Australia. That is really sick. First thing in the morning, watching RuneScape. In fact, a random Twitch, a random tiny RuneScape stream. That is very cool. I do have a YouTube channel. Um, most of my content is old runescape like runescape classic so not old school but even older than that um yeah i've got like 2001 scape videos which is runescape like a few months after it launched all right woodcutting 10 so yeah basically thanks for being here i appreciate you being in the in the stream that is very cool i don't know that i've had an australian um, viewer before. That's pretty sick. Honestly. Level 10 woodcutting is one of the requirements for My Arms Big Adventure. Level 10 woodcutting is one of the requirements for The Tale of Muspa. Light Jungle. Interesting. Oak Trees. Nice, nice. Includes Divine Oak Tree. Iron Hatchet. Okay, so we need to upgrade. Yeah, like OG RuneScape. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're, if you're on my YouTube channel, you should be able to eventually find content spanning across basically every version available of RuneScape is my goal. This is my number one favorite game. Um, yeah, I love RuneScape and all of its incarnations. 
Seeping Elm Tree, this is in Damonheim, and the Bathus Hatchet. These are both in Damonheim, which is the dungeoneering area. Epic, so our first skill at 10. Um, so now, if I move along with the activity tracker, the next skill is fishing. Um, yeah, well, since it's been a little over an hour, I think I'm actually going to take a break. Um, this has been a blast. Thank you. A big shout out to CD Steve and Warchief for being in the chat, in the stream. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for making my kickoff of Hardcore RS3 a blast. But yeah, with this, I'm going to take a break. Um, in today's episode, we went through Tutorial Island and we jumped off into the mainland and started down the Birthorp introduction task path. Aussies, including myself, are very easygoing, but we're also big alcoholics. Okay, okay, so easygoing and alcohol, that, that actually might go together, right? If you, you know, if you limit it to the fun point instead of the the overboard point. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, happy to hear that you're laid back and chill. Maybe that's why you're you're watching RuneScape at 7 in the morning. You're like, ah, uh, you know, what am I going to do today? Sounds like your time in the Navy. <laughs> this is great. See, now, now War Chief and CD, y'all can, uh, can connect. That's perfect. But yeah, in the next episode, I'm going to continue down this path. Um, yeah, we're going to fish and get my fishing up. And yeah, we'll, we'll go down the Birthorp introduction, introductory set of tasks. And we'll just kind of take it slowly so I can skill a little bit along the way. And that will be the plan. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I um, really appreciate you being here. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until the next episode, fight on.